This is a video about Revit uh, 2013 MEP Electrical Load Classifications. We're going to go directly into Revit. And uh, here we have opened a uh, template file saved in a previous video where we set up demand classifications. We go to the Manage tab and then for MEP settings. We're going to go back and take a look at our those demand factors that were previously set up. Now, uh, it's a few additions to the previous uh, video. One thing is here we have our continuous loads shown as a uh, constant calculation method and 125% uh, demand factor. One item that's been added is kitchen equipment. And kitchen equipment is a demonstration of a calculation by quantity and it's a total at one percentage. All of these demand factors are in accordance with uh, NEC uh, chapters which are shown. So in terms of what's included under this uh, type of demand, uh, you need to refer to the uh, code. Here um, we have a total at one percentage and for uh, kitchen equipment that's thermostatically controlled, if we have um, greater than two pieces of equipment, it's enough. 90% demand factor for the, the whole thing, and uh, so on for the increasing numbers of equipment. So um, this is contrasted with a quantity calculation for um, or a calculation for receptacles where we're doing incremental uh, by load, and that is on all up to a certain point there's a demand factor and then a uh, different demand factor. Uh, for those above that point. So as opposed to uh, changing the demand factor depending on the quantity or the load for the entire thing or doing incremental parts of it. So now uh, we're going to go to uh, back again under MEP settings we'll go to uh, now you may see on the screen of your computer uh, the full uh, menu here if there's room for it. This is a little compressed because of the small size. So we go to load classifications, and these are used to actually apply uh, demand factors uh, to particular loads in terms of doing panel calculations. There are some um, with the construction template uh, that we began with. Uh, there are some load classification types that were already uh, put in here. We have uh, HVAC and uh, this is picking up the default demand factor, which is 100%, uh, essentially no demand factor. We're going to assign this to uh, power when we're calculating uh, load for, for spaces. So HVAC stuff would, would show under the listing of power. Under lighting, we're going to uh, change this a little bit. We're going to show two different kinds of lighting. Uh, we're going to rename uh, this one. And this will be intermittent. And that um, intermittent lighting is uh, lighting that's uh, not on for longer than three hours. So stuff that's on occasionally in a storage space or something controlled by an occupancy sensor would be into that uh, intermittent category. And we're going to assign this as the lighting load for space. And then uh, we're going to add another uh, type of lighting, and this will be um, lighting continuous. This will be lighting as uh, in a store or an office where the lighting is left on uh, all, all day. And for that continuous lighting, we're going to go to a demand factor of continuous, which is essentially 125%, which the NEC calls for on continuous loads. Again, uh, we're going to put this under the category of lighting. For our motor loads, uh, we're going to pick up a demand factor here that we previously set up of motors. Uh, so basically, it's 125% of the full load current of the motor. And um, in feeders, uh, it would be uh, the, la the largest motor at 125%, the rest at 100%. We're going to put those motors under the power category. 
now I'm going to go to the power classification and uh, I'm going to delete that one that's too vague and um, now I'm going to add a new one I'm going to call this one uh, dedicated and continuous This would be equipment, uh, the only thing on the circuit is a particular piece of equipment. And this uh, equipment would be something that runs uh, all the time. So it's running more than three hour period of time. So for this, we're going to go to our uh, continuous command factor. And we're going to assume that this is going to be uh, power equipment. And as with the lighting, we're going to put in a dedicated intermittent and a dedicated intermittent equipment uh, would have that uh, default which is just a normal 100% demand factor and we're going to call that one power as well now we're going to add something a little different here with a dedicated smaller and this is uh, for a type of equipment where you have two pieces of equipment that are installed and they can't possibly because of interlocks run at the same time so the electrical code allows us to uh, use a smaller non-coincident load rating here which you wouldn't uh, calculate the load for the smaller piece of equipment that couldn't run and we're going to call this uh, power as well then we're going to do that same thing with the uh, smaller load and we're going to apply it in this case to the uh, HVAC we'll call this one HVAC smaller And the demand factor here would be small and uncoincident again because uh, this isn't running at the same time as a larger load. And the load class for use of spaces here will be power. Then we're going to add another. Uh, this would be receptacles general. Receptacles general, we're looking here at using the receptacles demand factor from the NEC, and these are for receptacles calculated at 180 uh, VA per receptacle. And those would be also under power. And finally, uh, one of the particular uh, special type of load, which would be uh, kitchen equipment. This will uh, some commercial kitchens so it'll come under the demand factor for kitchen equipment, and this also would come under power. So uh, basically, uh, uh, that finishes the load classification types. We've got a pretty uh, broad selection here. That concludes setting up the load classifications in a subsequent video. We'll uh, demonstrate how to assign these load classifications to particular types of equipment so that they're reflected in the calculations for the panel schedules. Now, of course, you want to uh, save the file at this point since it was a template file that was open and we've added some stuff to that template. So we'll just go and click save and that will uh, keep that template. Uh, information for future use. For further information, go to drinfrastructure.com.